Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Ragusa, which is a super, super impressive game. This is from designer Fabio uh, Lapiano, and it's the first game of his I played, but a couple of years ago he brought out another one that was super duper well received. Uh, people were really raving about it. It was uh, called Kalimala, and unfortunately I never got a chance to play it because it had a three player minimum, and who does that with the modern Euro? But uh, Fabio did, and I'm so happy that for his sophomore effort, he has actually put the time and work in to make the two player game work, and it does. This is a really sharp game that Jen and I have enjoyed quite a bit. Um, and, you know, there's several reasons. Probably the single most important thing about this game is just how revolutionary it is in terms of worker placement. I don't know if this is the first game that's done. There might have been a few others, but um, you know, this idea that when I put a worker down on the board, I'm not just activating one space, I'm activating three adjacent spaces. Just that is already super cool. Um, you know, and, and that would have been enough. But uh, Fabio ups the ante by saying, hey, when I do that, not only do I get to activate three um, adjacent spaces, but I trigger activations of other buildings that are already in these three adjacent spaces of mine and of everybody else's. So while the game starts out fairly small and slow-paced and simple, by the end of the game, as you place one building, you can create these huge, super chain reactions actions of like a half dozen different things based on, um, well, based on how you've strategized over the course of the game. Because if you've got a place where you've already got, a, you know, a tight clove of your own buildings and you have enough stone production to be able to put another building in there, I mean, you can have monster super turns at the end of the game that just feel fantastic, that make everything snap into place. But the, the even more beautiful thing about that is you're giving, chances are, you're not the only person who's built in those zones, and so you're giving other players opportunities to have big, super, multi-action turns when it's not their turn, and that is awesome. I love it to bits. This is re this is worker placement really redefined. And in fact, uh, um, last month I did my uh, my first update after five years of my top ten worker placement games. But what that means is. The, the worker placement, the 10 worker placement games that I feel really push the art form forward, if I had played Ragusa, it would have made that list. It, it, it is that amazing. Um, the one-two punch of, hey, uh, a worker activates everything adjacent to it, but it also triggers every other building that's in every area adjacent to it. Um, and uh, players planning, okay, I know you're going to go there, so i got to get in there, um, even if it means it gives you a little bit of stuff so that you can give me stuff later on, because I see your whole strategy is about that. Really, really sharp. Uh, there is a lot to like here. And then I would say there's also really good uh, replayability too, because while it may not seem like much, I mean these uh, objective cards you get, and you can't, you start with one, you can earn more over the course of the game, really give you very strong paths to follow that will make your overall strategy change in significant ways from game to game. And I really appreciate that too. I, I think that stuff is really nicely implemented. Um, and while there is kind of a familiar flow to the game. The game is always, by design, going to start... The story of this game is always going to start with small, um, inconsequential production buildings out in the in the woods, in the woodlands, before we can actually get to the city and make the really big things happen. Uh, it just creates this overall arc where, yeah, we just start out as simple lumberjacks and olive growers, and by the end of the game, we were titans of industry, engaging in trade with more, four, five, six merchants all at once in a single action. Um, well, that'd be a bit much, six, but but you get the idea. Um, you know, two, three, four, all at once off of a single action and trading away all our stuff just in time um, for the uh, you know before the game is up because yeah you're just doing well in a two or three player in a two player game fourteen worker placements in a three player game twelve and I think it's like ten and I forget eight you're not really doing very many worker placement actions in this game but like I said they just combo explode and it's awesome if you like Euro style goods conversion games which of course Jay and I love so we are super impressed by this uh, you know and the production is very nice again you are in the run through I just did I, I did the the kind of gamey version of the board where you really pay more attention to the icons and the you know the worker placement spots you flip the board over and you get to see a little bit more of the countryside and it feels a little bit more homey and the and the world comes to life a little bit more which is appreciated too uh, but you want know I could wax rhapsodic about how great this worker placement system is, but there's other really good stuff too. I love the way the dynamic market works. This simple thing of, I can see that wine is going to go up very, very soon. 
And while in the game I did, I never once went to the wharf to try to take advantage of, you don't have to wait till the end of the game to get rid of your excess goods based on market value. You could make your whole game about getting those goods and then trading them at the wharf um, while the price is high before they drop, waiting for them to climb from two to three so that you can get you know 12 points instead of eight or you know whatever it might be. That stuff is a lot of fun too. Like I said, their game just offers a lot of different paths to victory uh, in you know in the confines of a very simple structure. And, you know, I mean, gosh, this area control battle for the for the wall is especially clever as well um, because you know it's not often that you get area control in games where oh no no you and I we both control a, this portion of the wall it's okay uh, because yeah you can um, deploy your first troops i.e. the buildings there and then I can just build over the top of your troops or, or you know with gates or if you put gates over there I can just slip right in with buildings later on I really like it a lot too although. I will say, talking about the stuff that Jen and I were a little bit less crazy about, this it, this can still be, if it's a situation where both players are going for a wall, it's interesting. In a two-player game, because there's not that much stuff getting put down, you can really kind of push your luck and extend a tenuous grasp of a wall in quite a... And then another player could just come along and in one turn, especially the second player in a two-player game who gets the final turn of the game in, in an area control game, it's always best to be the last player, uh, and could just like completely undercut you. Uh... And, um, you know, obviously that means, oh, well, you just can't afford to extend yourself. Um, you have to build more like you would with uh, um, a shorter player, uh, a larger player base, where everybody's kind of trying to gobble up uh, spaces along the wall. But still, you know, Jen and I were not the most fans of area control. And while, yeah, it, it's cool that we can kind of share control over portions of the wall, there were still ample opportunities to say, oh, yeah, you're, this wall is not going any further for you. You cannot build any farther because I'm just going to cut you off right here. Okay, well, then I'm going to cut you off over there. And your big wall isn't quite so big anymore, is it? That I, Well, I like the idea of it. In a two-player game where, you know, everything is so... You know what? Every point you deny me is a point for you, effectively. It felt a little bit more aggressive than we would have liked. Not enough to keep us away, necessarily, but I, I would have... I, it's area control. You like it or you don't. Uh, it's really done in a very, very clever way here. But generally, Jen and I tend not to like it because there can be room for some really cutthroat moves here. Um, you know, or some really... I mean, you know, some indirect, you know... Care Bear versions of Cutthroat, like, oh, I just had a really big, um, you know, uh, you know, wine making turn. I, I'm, I'm full of wine, and then you say, oh, that's what I'm going to make wine now too, so that you don't get any. It's like, what? But I have this infrastructure. You're not going to let me leverage it, you know. So there can be a few little things like that. It's, it's okay, but um, you know, Jen, and I did find ourselves more often than we like to saying. Oh, honey, I'm really sorry, but I got to do this because this is a game of timing. Timing for controlling the ships. Timing for when to make your move in an area where some other player has the potential to get more out of it than you would, unless you time it right. And suddenly they get nothing and you get everything. Um, I'm really impressed by it. And uh, I, I just ultimately think it's probably got a little bit too much... You know, I mean, again, please remember, Jen and I are the ultimate Care Bears. We're... we're babies about this stuff. I don't think most people, uh, I'm sure the designer, uh, Fabio himself, say, what? My game is too cutthroat? That's that's insane. For us, maybe it is just a little bit, which is too bad because we love everything about this game. The other thing I would say about a two-player, well, I do love these power buildings. That's a really clever way to do it and very non-standard. This is not how I think most designers would have gone about doing it. Uh, it does work really well, but these power buildings can be a really great source of that cutthroat nature um, because they give you more flexibility and more power than you would normally have in a multiplayer game. And I do kind of find myself wishing it because, it's interesting, I didn't talk about it all, but Rusa comes with a very robust solo mode where you are playing against two other players, each of whom have a deck of cards that will determine where they're going to build buildings. And so you have imperfect information about what they're going to do. And so you can plan around that, but you don't know exactly when they're going to do stuff. It's really smart. I was very impressed by it. Um, and I kind of wish... Some of that element, you know, the notion of, you know, there's kind of like this notion of, oh, yeah, there's certain uh, spaces that are parcel to side that the dummy player will eventually build in. You don't know when they're going to do it, and so you can never build in those particular spaces. I would have liked to see something like that in for the two-player game, rather than the power buildings, which, like I said, just kind of up the aggression factor, up the uh, brinksmanship. I think that's a better term for it. Up the brinksmanship of it. I would have liked to see, no, there's just a third player who um, works in semi-predictable ways, much like a human player is a semi-predictable player as well. I 
I wish I, I wish that would have been the way he had implemented the two player. Although I understand for people who hate dummy players, just having two more buildings that have a slightly different power is probably the smarter way to go because so many people hate um, you know Ot uh, Ot Ot Otama players. But Jedi, we love them, and I think if that had been the way the game had gone, it, this probably would be a keeper for us because then suddenly the two player game. Well, it would have a lot more cool, fun, dynamic stuff. It would have a third agent working the board that I could try to time around. Right now, with only one other player, all my timing is focused on one player. This game is definitely... I don't think anybody, including Fabio, would disagree that the more players you have, the better this gets, because there are just more opportunities being created all the time by more players trying to muscle into the same tight little city. Uh, so I think the two-player game would have benefited from taking the Otama rules that they developed for solo play, and I wish they'd kind of done that. I think that would have put it over the top because then it wouldn't be quite so zero-sum. It wouldn't be quite so cutthroat at two-player. And um, everything else that makes this game so wonderful just comes to the fore. Uh, because this is a game that is all about the joy of picking... Oh my gosh, you're moving in there? Am I going to be able to get that last space over there? But I can't do that right now because I've got to still get more stone. I've got some fish. I could turn that into stone, but I was. I, but that means I can't really use the fishmonger anymore. You get a lot of exciting... You get a lot of push and pull in several different directions at any given time, and you have very little time to get stuff done. Even though those last few turns where you place a single building may feel huge because you end up pulling off a half a dozen things with a single action, um, and then end up giving a half a dozen actions to other players too, you still only have a finite number of turns, and so you've got to get so much done in so little time. I'm super duper impressed. Uh, like I said, I think if the two player had been implemented a slightly different way, I think this would have had a chance of making it into my top 10 of the year. I'm, I, I, again, I have not seen worker placement done in such a cool, fresh, unique way in years, really. And uh, but it doesn't stop there. The area control is fresh and different. Um, you know, everything about this game just sings, and I'm very impressed. And Fabio Lapiano, if he continues to focus on two-player gaming and um, continues to hone his craft, I think he is definitely gonna be a designer to watch for me and Jen moving forward in the years to come. And that, folks, is Ragusa. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.